What's up more modders? I thought we'd try something a little bit different today. As you could probably tell by the title of the video, today I'm going to be doing a what's in my toolbox video. Basically what I'm going to go over is my favorite subset of tools that I like to use on a semi-regular basis. Someone's coming through the floor. And some tools that I really like and tools that I think are generally useless or that I outright hate. So this is my main toolbox. This is the one that I do 90% of my work out of. This is obviously a Craftsman three drawer locking toolbox. Uh, you can see we're stickered up, um, but in the top here, it's kind of a mishmash of stuff. Um, you know, your standard items, wire brush, file, monkey wrench, drivers. You know, you gotta have the uh, quarter inch drive nut driver for your sockets. No toolbox is complete without vice grips, gotta have those. Over here, I keep this little dish of like small adapters. There's some swivels and uh, stuff like that. Definitely gotta have one of these in your toolbox. This is a feeler gauge. Another one you probably shouldn't live without, I believe this is a torch tip cleaner. Little, basically like toothpicks, you know, ranging in sizes. These are great for cleaning out carburetor jets and ports. There's really no reason to not have one of these, they're insanely cheap, you might as well buy a few of them. Um, down here in the drawers, these drawers actually lock when you close this lid, so they won't open up on you. When you open it up, you can pull them open. So in my top drawer, this is all my standard sized, um, SAE size uh, sockets. I will tell you right now, I definitely prefer the six point sockets over the 12 point like that. I feel like the 12 points tend to strip nuts more than they help anything. This, uh, it's like a spark plug swivel. That's really awesome for working on uh, automotive applications because the swivel is permanently affixed to the spark plug wrench, spark plug socket, my bad. Second drawer, this is all my standard size uh, wrenches, combination wrenches. Some of them are a little bit more specialized, these ratchet, but they also have a 45 degree offset. Flex head ratchet, seriously should be a staple in any toolbox. I like the extra long handle because if I'm using a flex head, chances are you're gonna get the clearance you need for the long handle. So my last drawer, this is all my metric stuff. Um, metric wrenches and sockets. So that's my craftsman box. This one's great, these are worth their weight in gold, these little toolboxes. If you can't bring it in this toolbox, you probably don't need it. So over here is my stainless steel stackable Husky rolling tool chest. I don't have a lot of tools in this because unfortunately, if I had a garage, I'd probably keep more in this because I would work in the garage, but chances are if I'm doing something, I'm doing it outside. So I take my little red craftsman toolbox out there and set it on a little table. Uh, but up here, you know, I just got regular assortment of stuff. It's just nothing but cotter pins in here. It always seems like you can't have too many cotter pins. I got Loctite and I got anti-seize over here and you know, just greases. These are for brake calipers, good stuff. Most of these drawers are empty, but we'll start up here. This is a harmonic balancer puller kit. I've never actually used it to pull a harmonic balancer. What I do use it for is for pulling wheels and pulling pulleys. They're great for flywheels, all kinds of stuff. Um, this is a nut cert tool, kind of like a pop rivet gun, but it inserts threaded nuts like into a piece of sheet metal where you can then thread something in. It's kind of hard to explain. Pop rivet gun, compression tester. Um, this is valve lapping suction cups. This is a valve spring compressor. This guy is pretty cool. This is a, a chain brake. I had to make this tool so I could actually put them back together. Looks like a wasp, looks like it made a nest in there when this was in my old garage, that's great. We go down one, I've got a tap and die set, tubing double flare kit so you can actually make brake lines if you wanted to. Really good to have one of these click and torque wrenches. This is something you definitely want to have. I really think it's way more accurate than these I-beam, or whatever they call them, beam torque wrenches. Big ass adjustable wrench, which works great for home defense or otherwise, I don't think I've ever used that thing. This is kind of neat, it's like a strap wrench, but it works with a piece of chain instead of a strap. Great for oil filters that are stuck on, by the way. If you have an oil filter or something, you lock that son of a bitch on there and sheet is coming off. And this guy's great for lining up holes and frames. I think it's a spud wrench, but if you have like uh, two pieces of metal and you're trying to line the holes up, you can like, I wish I had an example here, but you can kind of like drive this down through and sort of wiggle it and it'll line up the holes for you to drive your bolt in. And down to the second box, just hacksaws, wire brush, Hammers, gotta have the BFH, it's a good one. This is my powered screw gun, the plug-in style. Uh, grinders, 
clamps, sheet metal clamps, cutoff wheel, angle grinders are invaluable. They are worth their weight in gold. Get one, get these little uh, knotted wire wheels if you're knocking rust off, they're amazing. I will say, make sure you're wearing a shirt you don't care for because the little uh, wire flex will come off and embed themselves in your clothes. And make sure you try to clean them out before you throw them in the laundry or else they end up in your kid's underwear and they don't typically like that. And the bottom shelf, it's just Dremel and this is my reciprocating saw. And this is actually a mini torch kit for oxygen and propane or oxygen and map gas. Uh, I've used it a few times, but it blows through the oxygen so fast, I really don't find it economical to use. Now also over here, this when I uh, moved out of the old shed, the old uh, garage, I took all the tools, but I didn't, I sold the cabinets. So I kept all the sockets. So now I have a tool, mini toolbox, literally full of sockets and wrenches. Some of them need to be cleaned up, the rust and stuff. Sorry, the lighting's not so good. Same goes for this box, just more of the same, not as full, but still a ton of stuff in there. So this is my electrical kit, and I'm pretty good at 12 volt electronics and stuff like that, wiring stuff up, so I built myself a little kit. Tackle boxes are great for this because it has little organizers for all your stupid stuff. Relays, heat shrink tubing, wire, got all kinds of spools of wire down in here. Stuff barely fits in here. Um, this is just basically all my little pieces that I can't fit comfortably into this tote, which has soldering iron, my voltmeter, flux paste for my soldering iron, all kinds of heat shrink tubing. And over here on this side, you know, new mills pliers, just a small set. This is one of my favorite tools. This is a wire stripper. This thing can strip multiple wires at the same time. So if you have like telephone wire and you put three wires in this bad boy, it'll do all of them at once. Really good. Buy a heavy duty version of this. I think I actually got these from Harbor Freight. I'm not a big fan of these things. These things just suck. I hate them, but sometimes, like if I was to break this guy, then I would be using this one. Test Light, another invaluable product. These are great. But yeah, other than that, it's just a couple rolls of solder. There won't be anything in this one. And my electrical tape, which I try to avoid using at all costs because that shit sucks. I honestly didn't even realize that was a pocket right there. I'm just now feeling it for the first time. And I think there's actually something in there. I don't know what it is. I didn't even know there was a pocket here. What is this? Oh, a zip tie. Yeah, wouldn't you know it? It's like the infamous McDonald's french fry in every vehicle you own. Eventually, you're going to find one somewhere. So hopefully, I'm not dragging on too long with this stuff and boring you guys. I know some people are going to be like, oh, great, it's a tool video. Who cares? Everyone's got tools. Yes, everyone does have tools. Everyone always needs more tools. Everyone is always interested in seeing what tools maybe they don't have that they could use that maybe you never even knew existed. So right now I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite tools that I've had for a while. And then I'm going to show you some tools that I really hate, gimmicky stuff that I think is absolutely dumb and I don't even understand why it exists. So first off, let's start with something really, really simple. A bent screwdriver. This is literally a bent flat-headed screwdriver. It's really dumb how often this thing has come in handy for me. I'm not going to tell you guys to run out there and bend your flathead screwdrivers, but if you have just one that you don't mind molesting a little bit, I say bend it and make sure your tip is just kind of a little sharp. Secondly, this one's pretty common but still pretty neat, 45 degree tipped needle nose pliers. I like these, these are actually a cheap set, I wish I had nicer ones. The reason I say they're cheap is I like when my needle nose pliers have this texture, but I like it when the texture goes all the way to the tip. You can see that this one, it doesn't go all the way to the tip and I can't tell you how infuriating that is sometimes when you're trying to yank on a cotter pin and you've got two flat pieces of friggin' tweezer crap. Pretty good little tool. Definitely pick one of those up if you don't have one already. This guy, just a mechanical dike cutter and I call it mechanical because your average uh, cutter works like this. You know, the pressure you put in is the pressure you get out. What this is really good for is actually, uh, I always have a hard time getting clean cuts on like bicycle brake cables. Right here, this guy. So, you know, push and pull, it's a cable. Everybody has them on bicycles, some people have them on their lawnmowers. Um, I always have a hard time getting a clean cut on the end of these. These things are really great for that. And plus they're spring loaded so they stay in your hand. You don't have to open them, like put your finger underneath it to kind of hang on to it. Let's see if I can get a good cut on it. I'll probably f this up now that I'm on camera. Yeah, right there, look at that. Nice and clean. These regular stupid cutters in the back of a pair of needle nose, just they don't, they don't cut it, literally. And lastly, but not leastly, this is, I think it's a Craftsman strap wrench. Um, you can grab onto some big items. Uh, I sometimes use them for oil filters when they're in hard to reach areas. Or on those pinch moments when your wife wants to take you out, you can just kind of wear it as a necktie. Um, if she doesn't like it, then she just doesn't understand the lifestyle, so you probably should get a divorce. So now let's move on to some stuff that I hate that I don't understand why it exists. First off, 
This was part of a set that I sent separated. This came with sockets of its own, 3 8 and <laughs> quarter inch respectively. I picked this thing up twice in my life and it is infuriating to use because you put an extension on it, a little demonstration. And say you're trying to reach into somewhere and it just flops around. It's so frustrating. But wait, there's more. It actually extends, which isn't necessarily a bad idea. I wish my regular socket wrench would do this, this swivel thing. Nope. Junk. The other one that I hate, I don't think I've ever used this, the bionic wrench. It is dumb. Let's see if I can find something here. So you got your hex head bolt, you got your bionic wrench. The idea is you take your hex head, you slide your bionic wrench, and you grab it, and you turn. Seems like it would work, doesn't it? Well, it doesn't. It tends to slip past these little teeth like that. So your squeezing pressure really regulates the actual clamping pressure of the hex. And so if you've got a really big one and you can't close your hand all the way because the bolt is so big, the hex head, then you're probably gonna strip the shit out of it and just ruin it. Unless the bolt is hand tight, I don't see why you would use this. And if the bolt is only hand tight, just use your hand. So there you go, there's a little peek at my toolbox collection. I encourage you guys to go in the comment section if I left anything out or missed anything or something I don't even, am not even aware of. Post the Amazon link or an eBay link. Usually Amazon works better because they stay up longer. Post those down in the comments section so everyone can see. Uh, maybe somebody will come across something they didn't know they needed but now all of a sudden can't live without. Or by all means, uh, make your own video just like this, what's in my toolbox, and post it in the comments section. Leave a link down there. People can kind of scroll through and check out everyone's videos. This would be a nice little hub for everyone to kind of build a tool collection off of if you don't already have one or if you're looking to expand one that you already have. But let me know what you guys think. I know it's a little bit different of a video, but I thought it'd be kind of neat to kind of show you guys what I use. But either way, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.